mean? What does alphabet mean? It's zimu, and that's the problem. How many, can we say how many alphabets are in my name Karen? Can we say that? Many people do in Taiwan. Because you think that zimu means it's it's called an alphabet. The English, we wouldn't say the English alphabet, it's the Latin alphabet. The Latin alphabet, the Korean alphabet. Letters, everyone please make sure you're clear on that because I saw in some of your notes you're talking about three alphabets. And that's, that's a san tao zi mu, like Korean and, and the Latin alphabet and the Georgian alphabet, for example. That would be three alphabets. Zi ran is letter. One written symbol is a letter. Zeng tao is the alphabet. Make sure you're clear on that. That's a really common Taiwan mistake. And, okay. I wanted to ask you if you had any questions you wanted to ask right away about chapter two, but um, we have to wait for one more student, so we'll skip that. I think we better just jump into chapter three. We need to get through it. I may ask you to just stop at a certain place. I will summarize in order to try and get through the chapter faster. Okay? So, our next reader, are we ready? Okay, remember to say your name and everybody follow along. Go ahead. Page 58, the mm. third paragraph. Very good. If you have access to a computer that can record sounds, and then you see the waveforms of words. You can verify these for yourself. Okay, skip the parentheses. And we're gonna record these words. I'm gonna stop you for a minute. We're going to do these. And I'm going to give you now an assignment and I'll give you two weeks to complete it because I want you to become acquainted with a new kind of software which is called what? Yeah, you can call it Pratt if you want, but Pratt. Prat, it's Dutch for speech. Prata means to speak. And you will need to download it to your computer. It's very, very easy to download and install. If you have a Mac, no problem. <clears throat> and I'm going to send you some instructions and tutorials and links so that you can get started with Plot. It will take a little time to get used to it. With WASP, you really didn't need any instructions at all except to turn off the functions we didn't want. We only wanted a waveform. We didn't want a broader, narrow spectrogram. We didn't want a pitch track. You don't need to worry about those right now. But that was about the only thing that you had to learn. But for Plot, it's much more complex because it has many, many, many more functions. But once you, and you don't have to learn them all at once. You just need enough to learn how to do the exercises. And then if you're interested, you can go on learning. There are many tutorials teaching you how to use it, and there's a whole manual for it. So I will be sending you over email handouts. And the reason I'm not posting them is because some of them are under copyright. So I'll be emailing all of you. Or I may, I'll have to figure out how to send it, because I haven't been maintaining an email list. We've been talking over Facebook. But we will get it to you somehow. There are a number of tutorials and instructions on getting started. And previous students have told me that they're quite clear and it's easy to get used to. So you are going to do an assignment in which, let's go back to that table of words. I want you to record all of these words in table 3.1 on page 57. I want you to record all of these words and you will, in addition, need to make another set of waveforms, recordings. And that is, after you have recorded the words in column four, which are spy, sty, sky, and note that in column three, the third item, it's a by, a die, a guy, G-U-Y. If you didn't correct it, correct it now. Hey, that's a mistake. So after you've recorded all of these, and then try to fit them six per page. 
，就是一面可以放得下六个左右，应该是六个可以放得下。You can change the size， 那个大小是可以调整的。So six waveforms per waveform displays per side of paper. Okay. So we want to do all of these. So that's how many all together? That's 18. In addition, you need to do three more. And that is, after you have recorded the words in column four, spy, sty, sky, what is special about these words, especially compared to the other ones? What do we have to watch out for when we have an S before a voiceless stop, PTK? What do we not do when we have a word with this kind of a, an initial? We don't aspirate, that's right. We don't aspirate. So we don't say spy, sty, sky. Now I've been thinking about this because I listen to a lot of audiobooks from LibriVox. If you don't know about LibriVox, you should go there if you want to listen to a lot of free audiobooks. It's a great way to get a lot of reading done, like when you're hiking or driving. But I was listening to one of the readers who had an accent that sounded a lot like Taiwan English. Yeah, and her name looked kind of Taiwanese as well, or Chinese. So I looked it up, and she lives in Brazil. And she may be a Chinese who lives in Brazil, I don't know. But her English is very clear and mostly correct, but it's got most of the Tezhang of Taiwan English. And one of them is spy, stai, sky. So while I'm walking along, enjoying the scenery of my hike, and listening to my book, I'm making a list of all the things she does that are the same as Taiwan English. Yeah, I think I grabbed, out, grabbed a pen and wrote them down on a fa piao, so it's, it's in my hiking belt. Um, she does a lot of things. Another one was she, she overcorrects. She, she uses hypercorrect Zs. So for example, fang kai, R-E-L-E-A-S-E. -E -E. How do you say that? Very good, but is that, that's a long E, but we don't want to make it too long because what? The E sound, <coughs> excuse me, the E sound in the second syllable, we don't want to make it too long because what? Is it okay to say release? Well, people say it, it's really common in Taiwan, there's a further mistake that I'll point out in a minute. Release, is that correct? No, because? Jamie? It shouldn't be voiced. You mean the S? If it were so long, then we'd have a voice sound, do you mean, or what? OK. So release. It sounds funny because the sound after the E is S. Is it voiced or voiceless? Therefore, should the E be very long? No, because if a vowel is followed by a voiceless sound, it should not be too long. And this is a really common mistake here, but there's an additional mistake piled on top of it. Not just release, they say release. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot, even among people who are pretty good at English. So that's two mistakes. Well, assuming you're saying a Z, then the long E makes sense. But both are wrong if you're considering the standard pronunciation. So it should be S, and because it's voiceless, the E should not be too, too long. Release, release. And it was all over her speech, all over her reading. And you have it in Mandarin. Is that right? It's Mandarin. Case But she would say case. Case, release. Those are examples of you could say they're hypercorrect, you didn't because in Taiwan English, lots of times people neglect to pronounce the Z's, right? So instead of saying, for example, um, um, raise, just a T gao, raise, people will say race. Is that right? But this person put too many Z's in and then too many long vowels, etc. So you need to watch out for that. And another thing she did was spy, sty, sky. So the whole time I was listening, I was doing phonetics rather than listening to the story. So um, what we're going to do is you take spy, sty, sky, lu hao li ho. Then you're going to do some surgery. You're going to cut off the S. 
That's in a new file. 你要另存新档，原来的档案要保留着，要另存新档。And then I want you to at, cut off the S, and then I want you to play the sound again. Also paste it in to your assignment. So you've got 18 waveforms to do all together. Cut off the S, and I want you to play it and listen to it, and I want you to tell me if the sound, if the stops sound more like PTK or if they sound more like BDG. So when you listen to the files of Spy Sty Sky with the S's cut off, do they sound more like Pi Tai Sky or do they sound more like Bai Dai Guy? So you need to write that in addition on your assignment. What they sound more like? Do they sound more like Pai Tai Kai or Bai Dai Gai? So altogether, it's 18 waveforms. You'll get a lot of chance to play around with the software. Okay, you'll do it with Pot. I will send you the instructions and tutorials and things. So I'll give you two weeks on this assignment. You liang li bai. I want you to take time and get to know the software. I don't want you to panic or anything. And do a good job. Is that all clear? What we need to do? That's a new assignment. So we're going to do that now that the test is over. We can start doing this stuff again. So that's what we're talking about in this paragraph. Uh, the book suggests Wave Surfer, but I have had little problems with the Wave Surfer. And Pot now is used by many, many phoneticians. So that's what we're going to use. Um, all right, why don't you continue reading and then we'll hear the instructions again. Record. Record words such as spy, sty, sky, spill, steel, skill. Skill? Skill. Each set as a separate word. Separate word. Separate word. Everyone, separate, 那个 T is a stop at stops, the diva. Separate word. Separate word. Good. Now, find the beginning and end of each and cut this part out. Mm, cut this part out, 可以吗？完全一样的问题，跟那个 separate word 不是 separate word， it's separate word. We should say, cut this part out. Can you try it again? And cut this part out. Good. When you play the L T. Oh, you 不要放重音 When you play. When you play the V. L T V. V. When you play. When you play. You 要高吗 When when you play. All right, now you're doing another thing I have to point out. When you, when you should be, when, watch the end. When you, once more. When you play the, ad, the, the edited recordings. Edited. Edited. Good. Recordings to others and ask them okay. to And what? Ask. That one's an emotional one, excuse me. You have to watch this one, please, because it calls up too many emotional reactions. You need to fix this one. It's not bad, but it just is going to have emotions stirring in your listener, and you don't want that. It's not the time when you want emotions stirring. Everyone ask. Don't say ax. It's a feature of not standard English in America, and also elsewhere. I think in England, they may have it in some places. And we associate it with certain groups of people, and then we will have an emotional reaction. So you just don't want to distract your listener with that. Everyone, ask. Yes. Ask. Ask. Yes. Third person singular, asks. Yes. Asking. Asking. Asked. Yes. Ask. Yes. OK, please watch this one. This one's important, OK? And ask right. them to write down the words. Ask them. What's it? Ask them. It's ask them. Ask, ask them right. to write down the mm -hmm. words. Yo, Lila. To. To write down there, yeah, the words there. they hear, they will almost certainly write by die guy bill deal gill. All right, you don't have to do bill deal gill and spill still skill. You only need to do spy sty sky. And I want you to do that as well. Ask a roommate or somebody else what they hear. Just play the three words for them and see if they hear. Bai Dai Gai instead of Pai Tai Kai. So in addition to you writing what it sounds like to you, also ask somebody else. It's added to the assignment. Write it down so you don't forget. You need to ask somebody else what it sounds like to them. Don't tell them about the assignment. Just play them. Say, 
What does this sound, what words are these? Can you tell me what English words these are? Okay? So that's the assignment. And uh, I'll add some more on the web page to make it clear. Let's go on. Miranda, uh, what about the differences? Mm -hmm. First two words. What about? All right. And we have what kind of an allophone of T here? What about is perfectly correct, but when we're speaking quickly, we usually will say? What about? What about? So watch a T with vowels around it. T with vowels around it. Okay? So when you see a T with vowels on either side, usually it's going to be a tap in American English. What about? Go ahead. What about the differences between the words in the fifth and sixth columns? Sixth. Sixth. Good. Okay, let's look at the fifth and sixth column. Page 57, what are they? They were words that have the same kind of contrast that we had in the dictation for the test today. Nap, nab, mat, mad, nack, nag. Notice there's a vowel change. What do we call that? Nack, nag. Can you hear the different vowel? Nack, nag, a, a. What did we call that? We just call it velar raising. Yeah, it's a name I've given to it. It's described in some places, but not in all books. So, nack, nag, because it's a what kind of vowel? Uh huh. A short what kind of vowel? A short front vowel. Yeah, a short front vowel. And it is followed by a voiced velar sound. Remember that. A short front vowel followed by a voiced velar sound. And in many varieties of English, including mine, we get velar raising. So, nag, if it were NG, it would be nang, nang. And we do have that word in a place name, da nang, da nan in Vietnam, da nang, they'll say da nang. So, nag, nang, ta gung e la. All right, so um, these are the words in that column. Let's go on. The consonants at the end of nap, mat, nak are certainly voices. But if you listen carefully to the sounds at the end of the words nap, Mag, uh, nag, you may find that the so-called voice consonants but the g have very little voicing and might also be called voiceless. Try saying these words separately. You can, of course, say each of them with the final consonant released with a noise burst and a short vowel-like sound afterward. But it would be more normal to say each of them without releasing the final consonant. Releasing? Releasing. Yeah, don't make it releasing. It's what I was just talking about. Um, so it's an S. Don't make it a Z, whatever you do. And it's not long. Releasing. Releasing. Everyone? Releasing. Releasing. Yeah, good. Releasing the final consonants, or at least without anything like a vowel. You could even say cab and not open your lips for a considerable period of time if it were the last word of an utterance. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. That's the way I say it. Okay. In such circumstances, it is quite clear that the final, that. Con that. That uh -huh. the final consonants are not fully voiced throughout the closure. The closure. The closure. Very good. The point here, and this is one that actually you need to know about for the test, but you already do it too much in Taiwan English, so don't take this too seriously. In the words, let's compare nap, nab. Now, we can make it a released stop, a released voice stop. It'll, if we do that, for a voiceless stop, if it's released, it sounds like it has what at the end? What symbol do we use? Nap. That's a released voiceless stop. What symbol do we use to mark that? Nap. We used a small raised H, is that right? Because there's some aspiration after it, nap. So that's how we can release a voiceless stop. We usually don't though, right? And if it's unreleased, we use what kind of a symbol? It's a little corner, right? Um, I guess we've got a pen here. If it's unreleased, we have this unreleased symbol, it looks like the upper right hand corner of a square. That means it's unreleased. Now, 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 if we release a voiced stop at the end of a syllable, 
what do we get? Nab. Nab. For a released voiceless stop, we write a little raised H. If it's released, this will be nap. And if we release a voiced stop, then we're going to get a little schwa here. That's a tiny little schwa for those of you who can't see it. That's how one way we can show that we have released a voice stop. So nab, nab, you'll get an other in the home yet. So those are three ways of, well, we have three ways of annotating important things with final stops. First of all, if it's unreleased, we use this symbol. If it's voiceless and released, we use a small raised H. If it's voiced and released, we can use a small raised schwa. We can also have an unreleased voiced final stop. Okay? So nab, But he's saying that we don't usually release the stop at the end of a syllable or word, regardless of whether it's voiced or voiceless. So voiceless stops can voice stops. So nab, 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 we've got a little voicing down there. But even with that voicing down there, it doesn't go on really long. So for this situation, well, we have an unreleased voiced final stop. We have a little rumble down here of voicing. You wouldn't hum hum the because it has been put on. So we kind of stop after a while. We just can't maintain voicing like that very long. I've reached my limit. So final stops and final fricatives as well. What can we call those two uh, categories together as a group? Obstruents, a final obstruence, uh, obstruent. Final obstruent. That's the rule. That's the whole point of this paragraph. Now, the reason I say don't pay too much attention to it, you have to know it for the test, and this is definitely true. So if I say, for example, buzz, can you hear that S at the end? It's not buzz the whole time. It's buzz. So all final obstruents are like this. They're only voiced about halfway through. At the end, they kind of peter out and they become voiceless obstruents, voiceless final stops or fricatives or whatever. The reason I say don't pay too much attention to it is because Taiwanese often don't voice them at all anyway. So Wan Chen Mei voicing, and that's not good because it's hard to understand. If you don't do that, and if you also don't lengthen the vowel, it's really hard for an English speaker to hear if you mean nap or nap, because for many Taiwanese, it's That one should be P, sorry. NAP and NAB. For a lot of Taiwanese speakers of English, these are often homophones, right? Nap, nap. Maybe you think, well, I don't. That means you're above average. And you know from some of the problems you've had with dictation, some of you do have this problem. It's very, very typical for Taiwan. So that's, it becomes even harder when you don't lengthen the vowel because the V is voiced, but only about halfway. So nab, and same with buzz. Is that all clear? This is important. Voicing only goes halfway through the final obstruent, but please don't forget the first half is still voiced. The length of the vowel is even more important, but please voice the first half. Okay? Is that all clear? This is important, especially for Taiwanese. Because you say, oh, nigga voicing, I will just want to voice. Then we have problems. Okay. So um, let's continue. Um, is that all clear, this whole paragraph? That means we're going on to the next reader. Go on. There is, however. There is, however. 
There is, however, a clear distinction between the words in the fifth and sixth columns. Say these words in pairs: nap, nab, mad, mad, nag, nag, and try to decide which has the longer vowel. Okay, and we already know that. Listen carefully. Can you hear the longer vowel clearly? Nap, nab, mad, mad, nag, nag. You can all hear it clearly. Let's try it backwards because maybe. I'm just lengthening it because it's at the end. Because when it's the utterance final, the shahal, 本来就会拉长 So let's try reversing the order. Nab, nap, mad, mat, nag, nap. You can still hear the difference, right? Okay. So we need to lengthen, and that vowel lengthening is even more important than voicing the final obstruent.、Um, Ruby, jump to the next paragraph. We're done with that one, Millie. You can hear that both speakers on the CD also distinguish these words by <laughs> vowel. These 变了重 Everybody, please note this. These 变了那么重 Just like you, 那其他的代名词 Okay. Distinguish these words. Also distinguish these words、right. by vowel lengths. In these recordings, each of the <clears throat> each of the speakers said the words nap, nab, mad, mad, nag, nag in the same phonetic context. 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 Everyone, they got ah, not the ah, it's ah. In my dialect, anyway, some people will say context. 尤其是啊啊不分的人，很多人比较偏向偏向啊的发音。Um, go ahead. I'll say, um,、mm, again. Blank again. Blank again.、Mm-hmm. By saying each word in a separate sentence. Separate. Separate sentence. Not sa. Se- separate、uh-huh. sentence.、Okay. It's easier to give each of them the same stress and intonation, and thus avoid the influence of these of these factors on the length of the word. This is called a carrier phrase. Carrier, a carrier phrase. Write it down. Something about these may be in the test. Why do we use carrier phrases? Carry, 就是带 a carrier phrase. We use a carrier phrase because if we don't, we have intonation getting in the way of word pronunciations. Intonation that comes from the sentence or the whole utterance. So if I say lie, die, buy, guy, hmm, 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 hmm. But English is not a tonal language. So the rising tone and the falling tone. Does it have anything to do with the word itself? No, it's at the sentence level. It has a juice as a tense, as an intonation, as a tense. We want to try to get rid of some of those factors influencing the pronunciation. And at the end of a sentence, at the end of a sentence, we have tonic stress, right? So we go very high and then fall. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So we're going to get all kinds of things going on. In addition to the pitch being higher, it's going to be longer. So in a carrier phrase, we're going to try to standardize the way a word is pronounced, and hope that it's less affected by intonational、uh, rules. Okay.、Um, let's look at the waveforms on the next page, on page sixty. We're going to skip that paragraph. So look at mad and mad. You can see the length of the vowel is much longer in mad. We can see it clearly. And if we compare, take a cap now, take a cab now, you would see the same thing.、Um, so the length of time between take and now is about the same. And it was Umi who asked on NTU Phonetics if or why you say that, why we say that the the length of a voiceless stop at the end is longer than a voice stop. That was the question. Where's Umi? Where's Umi? There. Okay. Right. And the reason is because if we put another word after it that starts with a consonant, you'll really see the difference. In take a cap now, we've got a really long pause there. But at, in take a cab now, you can hear the pause is much shorter. We've got voicing in there, and it's much shorter. And that's why we say that a final voiceless stop is much longer than a final voice stop. However, in the word cab, if we compare the vowels, which vowel is longer? The mouths or the jitanta. Which one has a longer vowel, mouths or jitanta? Jitanta has a longer vowel but a shorter final stop, and mouths has a 
shorter vowel, but longer final stop. This point is really important. So it's 结长不短. In the end, they come out to which one is longer? Which one is longer? They're about the same length for different reasons. One has a longer vowel, one has a longer final stop. So if you put a word that starts with a consonant after it, then you can compare them very clearly and see the difference. Okay, and he says that we can, we can not release, we, we can choose to not release a final stop as long as we want. We can go to bed saying cap <laughs> and breathe through our nose all night and that, that stop, that final stop will be unreleased until the next morning. Okay, by then I think you have to open your mouth. And we can also do that with voice stops. Cab, And here's another thing that we need to look at. And we know the, un the unreleased symbol, like we see a nap on the board here. That's the unreleased symbol. We can also use it when it's not a final stop, as in apt. Apt, apt means likely to. He's very apt to fall down and hurt himself if uh, he wears shoes that are too big, for example. He's very apt to, The P is not released here. We don't have apt. So we write an unreleased symbol there, apt. It's not always the final stop. And I mentioned this in class earlier. In fact, this question was in the test today. But we did talk about it earlier, the difference between white shoes and white shoes. Here we've got white teeth and white teeth. It's the same thing that we're talking about. The vowel is shorter, white teeth, Y teeth. If there's no sound after it, it's the longest, Y. voiced consonant, wide. But if it's voiceless, that's the shortest, white. So listen to Y, wide, white. And backwards, white, wide, Y, getting longer and longer. And you already know this if you have read the Stop It Stops article from Shi De, right? Do you remember that? We talked about that. Um, in there, there's a little story about listening to ICRT and what were the words that were confusing. On the radio, I heard some guys saying, um, it was the, 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 the Ke Jia Feng Qing. They were saying, they're famous for wine noodles. Remember? Yo. Jamie read it. If you haven't read it, you need to kind of stop it, stops. Okay, I heard wine noodles. Has anybody heard of jiu mian? So it's not wine noodles. What else is it not? It's not white noodles, right? We don't say white noodles. So it wasn't wine noodles, it wasn't white noodles. It wasn't, why noodles? So those three things, and this is honestly what I was thinking. I was driving in the car. And this is something you should know, that when you listen to something like music or a story or a broadcast or anything, I know this. I've just posted something about this on, on my Facebook. But I know exactly where I was. I was on Xinhai Lu, just getting to Jilong Lu. I remember perfectly the place every time I think of this story. And when I listen to audiobooks, our brains work that way. They remember places and associate them with sounds. The motor part, the motor cortex. Because when we're remembering, when we're remembering things in sequence, we sort of use our body. One, two, three, four. Even if we're not moving our body, the part of the brain that is handling that is the motor cortex. So I remember very clearly the place where I heard that broadcast. So it wasn't wine noodles, it wasn't white noodles, it wasn't wine noodles, it was Wide noodles, wide noodles. He forgot to stop. He said wine noodles. So I really couldn't understand it. I had to go through three wrong answers before I got the right one. And that's what happens when you don't stop at stops. 
But the point here is the length of the vowel. So white noodles, the vowel is the shortest. Wide noodles, it's longer because d is voiced. And then y noodles is even longer than wide noodles because it's an open syllable. So we have three different lengths depending on what comes after the diphthong. And this works for other vowels as well. Is that all clear? Okay, so we have finished up to the first paragraph on 61. Whose turn is next? Okay, you will start with the second paragraph on 61 next time.